Treasures of the Aegean released last week on the Nintendo Switch. It's an action adventure game where you must hunt for treasure on a long lost island, all the while trying to discover the mystery surrounding the island itself. Is this a gem worth unearthing, or should it stay buried in the depths of the Nintendo eShop? I'm Glenn Bolger, thank you to the publishing team for the review code, and now, let's find out. Story-wise, Treasures of the Aegean delves into Greek mythology. You follow Marie, a parkour expert, and James, a treasure hunter, as they look to explore the birthplace of Minoan civilization, the volcanic island of Thera, which has resurfaced having tragically sunk following an explosion in 1639. This lost island is full of treasure, relics, and possible answers to questions hundreds of years old in regard to the Minoans, but also appears to be stuck in a time loop. The protagonists are on a mission to stop history from repeating itself forever. In terms of the gameplay, Treasures of the Aegean has an interesting concept. You play as Marie and will be using her parkour expertise to navigate the ancient ruins. Moving through the ruins will begin to tentatively fill your map and you will at times come across points of interest that tie into the mythology of King Minos. Every time you find one of these, it will be added to your prophecy screen for each of your runs. Now I know that the mention of runs in video games usually alludes to said game being a roguelite, but that isn't really the case here. You see each run you go on has a time limit and when you are out of time you will be whisked away via helicopter as the volcano erupts to catastrophic consequences and you are sent back to the beginning of the day via that time loop I mentioned earlier. You aren't necessarily sent back to the same starting point though, I couldn't determine whether the starting point is random, story driven or triggered by something you did in a previous run, but the part of the map you discovered in your previous run will now be permanently filled in, leaving you to continue to discover new ground and attempt to fill in more of the gaps. As I said, any major landmarks you discover will stay on your prophecy screen and another part of the game is the treasure hidden throughout the ruins that you will need to find. Whilst some will be fairly straightforward to grab as you notice it on your travels, some will really test those parkour skills and others are only accessible by solving environmental puzzles. Collecting the treasure serves a couple of purposes. First of all, it may be needed in order to open up further parts of the ruins, and the world itself is huge by the way, but it also adds to your timer, meaning that on each new run you can explore further before you need to be airlifted out. Despite the time loop setting, the story does progress. New details from the character's past are revealed between runs and sometimes there are playable flashback levels interspersed which generally see you attempting to grab an item cat burglar style without being seen by the guards. Talking of guards, there are also enemies within the ruins that you will need to avoid. An exclamation mark will appear over your head when you are close to one, followed by a second and then a third to show how much immediate danger you are in. The AI of these enemies is not particularly impressive and the projectiles they shoot at you move so slowly that it just looks a little bit odd in all honesty. The freedom to explore did add a sense of wonder to the game but I did feel as if having an objective at times would have just tightened the gameplay up and added a bit more focus to proceedings. I also felt that there was a disconnect between the map and the prophecy page, with artifacts or points of interest found not correlating meaning you couldn't really cross reference one with the other as you charted the map on your way. Control wise, due to the parkour element of the game, movement is pretty fast and momentum based. Your character will take a moment to stop and will naturally grab onto ledges. You can climb walls by jumping into one and then pressing the left stick or d-pad upwards and you are able to achieve a decent amount of verticality before falling back down if you don't follow this up with another action. You can wall jump or lower yourself down from a ledge and on the whole the controls do help you achieve these feats. I say for the most part as they do feel a bit loose which can lead to you moving faster than you would sometimes like which makes jumping across platforms or stopping on a desired area a little tougher than it should be. You'll also sometimes find yourself unintentionally grabbing onto a ledge or pulling yourself up when not meaning to. At other times though things do feel very smooth especially if you reach an area with a long horizontal stretch where you can just pick up a bit of speed and go for it. Gameplay does a good job of creating a sense of freedom, and the time loop mechanic is interesting, although a little more direction at times would have helped. It scores 15 out of 20. Controls have moments where they do really make you feel like a parkour expert, but can also ruin these moments a little bit by becoming fiddly and awkward. They get 14 out of 20. When it comes to the visuals, Treasures of the Aegean adopts a comic book art style. It reminds me of European comics such as The Adventures of Tintin in terms of the style, and I do think this style adds a lot to the game. The strong use of colour and comic book tropes such as panels and speech bubbles works very well, although I will say that the actual quality of the artwork itself 
does vary quite wildly. Some of the static images don't look particularly impressive, plus animations such as the aforementioned slow moving bullets of enemies looks very poor. There is some variety in settings as you delve deeper into the ruins. Coming across a whale graveyard for example was an eerie yet quite satisfying sight, giving the game a sudden sense of mystery and you'll also find sunken ships and downed aircraft to name just a couple more. The music does a good job of adding to the mystique, with gentle tones giving way to more bombastic or foreboding qualities as your journey takes you to new and more dangerous places. Visuals are more than the sum of their parts, with the comic book style working well, but the quality of the art itself fluctuating. They get 15 out of 20. Audio does a good job of building the atmosphere, very well for the most part in fact, although it does lack a little variety at times, and it gets 16 out of 20. Treasures of the Aegean cost £16.99 and regional equivalents are on your screen now. If you are watching this review in or around the date of its original release, then there is a 10% discount on this price until the 25th of November. To be fair, the world you can explore is very large and it's fun finding new treasures and the more linear espionage sections do help to mix the gameplay up a tad. Even with that said though, I did find my interest waning a little with each new run. I think for me personally, if they had just mixed things up further by having a few mandatory objectives and tightened the map up in terms of the design, I would have found myself playing more often. If the sound of the more open-ended gameplay intrigues you though, then you may not have this grievance, and value scores 15 out of 20. To conclude, Treasures of the Aegean offers a sense of scale and adventure as you chart the lost island of Thera. The time loop idea works well with the way you unlock more of the map and the island itself each time giving you motivation to continue to explore with the various treasures you find serving as a sense of reward, as do the puzzles that block your way when you manage to solve them. A lack of clear objectives did mean my interest diminished a little quicker than it may have otherwise done, but this may just be a personal gripe and on the whole, this treasure hunting adventure is a nice little find. Treasures of the Aegean gets a switch up score of 75%. Thank you everybody for watching this review, I hope you enjoyed it, please do remember to leave a like if you did. Is this a game that interests you, will you be picking it up? Let us know in the comments section. A quick thank you to our Patreons as always for your continued support, and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care, and until next time, happy gaming.